Party. There haven't been scenes like it since the 17th century. Crowds of people queuing up to see a Shakespeare play at the Globe Theatre. The new Globe is as similar as possible to the old one, which burnt down in 1613. Performances take place in daylight, half the audience stands in the open air, and the actors use no lights, sound effects, or makeup. Inspired by the late American director Sam Wanamaker, it's taken over 25 years to come to fruition. The Globe's artistic director believes it'll put extraordinary demands not only on its audiences, but also on its modern-day actors. You can't drop the ends of lines, uh, you can't drop the ends of words. You've got to, we've got to rediscover the love of words that they had at that time. And I think that, amongst my profession, might also bleed into the, um, the writers for the theatre, and I, I hope it will be a home for new writers, uh, as well as old. Although the Globe has attracted criticism from those who fear its authenticity could turn it into a gimmick, tonight's audience was eager to experience theatre as Shakespeare knew it. It's great fun being here, and I like the idea of shouting at the actors. I think it zips them up a bit. I think actors should have a lot more of that. Brilliant atmosphere, absolutely like, just brilliant. Interaction with the crowd and the audience, it's just really good. It's mind-blowing to be here. It's just the most exciting thing. Whether in the long run the Globe will prove as successful as it was in Elizabethan days remains to be seen. But tonight's performance is a sellout, and if it rains, there is one concession to 20th century audiences. Plastic Max, on sale in the theatre all night long. Rosie Millard, BBC News, at the Globe Theatre in London. The Queen is to unveil a new memorial at Westminster Abbey, dedicated to the civilian victims of conflict and violence around the world. It's intended to complement the tomb of the unknown soldier and is being finished in the southwest of Ireland. Our religious affairs correspondent Mike Waldridge has been to see it. In a sculptor's workshop a few miles from Cork, the memorial nears completion. Ken Thompson, an Irish Catholic whose work already graces a number of churches, was invited to produce a monument that would encourage people to pause and reflect on the suffering inflicted on civilians around the world and to be more active in rejecting oppression of all kinds. This is the model for a statue of a woman and child that was considered at one stage, but the final decision was for this striking memorial in Cumberland Slate. The whole idea has developed, really, as we've gone along. We've introduced the word violence into the memorial, for example, almost as a result, I think, of the Dunblane tragedy. We wanted to cover all situations of um, violence to innocent victims, not just war situations. The headmaster of Dunblane Primary School is among those representing civilian victims who are being invited to join the Queen for the formal unveiling of the memorial in October outside Westminster Abbey's Great West Door. Around two and a half million visitors pass by here each year, now invariably stopping at the tomb of the unknown warrior. The Abbey hopes people will see this and the new memorial as complementing one another. I believe that the people we're commemorating were victims in a different sense, in that they had not volunteered to serve. They were just living in their homes. Uh, they were caught up in the terrible uh, Soviet purges or in war or violence um, without any choice on their part. This memorial, now being chiselled into life here, will bear testimony in particular to a century that's witnessed much tragedy. If its poignant inscription reminds passers-by of the value of individual human life, Westminster Abbey's hopes for it will have been fulfilled. Mike Wooldridge, BBC News, County Cork. Uh, since we've been on the air, there have been reports that President Clinton is to impose tough new sanctions on the sale of tobacco in the United States. It's thought that he's accepted a recommendation that tobacco should be classified as a drug. The main news again tonight, the government has said the new national identity card will have the union flag on it. That's all from the 9 o'clock news. Good night.